Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. My name is Ron Rothman. I work at Beeswax, where we build great advertising software. We're about 30 engineers working in a mono repo. To date, we've built about 100 applications comprising 300,000 lines of Python code. And the problem we faced was how to manage our third-party Python dependencies. By third-party, I mean something you'd install from PyPI using pip, things like requests, BOTO3, Airflow, NumPy, et cetera. When we Bazel test or Bazel run some target, that target's third-party dependencies have to already be installed. Not only that, but the dependencies of every other target in its transitive closure also have to be installed. And those same dependencies have to be installed in production when the application is deployed. Now, when we had just one or two applications, we solved this pretty naively by putting all of those applications' dependency into a single requirements.txt file and just deploying that everywhere. As you might guess, this didn't scale very well once we had a critical mass of applications uh, written by multiple engineers. We quickly ran into version conflicts and other problems. <clears throat> and so we looked at rules Python. Excuse me. So we looked at rules Python. Uh, and we discovered that rules Python can't guarantee that you'll import the correct version uh, of a dependency, and that was unacceptable to us. So we took a look at pipenv, which is the Python community standard for managing dependencies and virtual envs. But the problem with pipenv was that it doesn't work well in a monorepo unless you're willing to make some major concessions, which we weren't willing to make. And so that led us to roll our own solution. Our solution, which we call Beav, is a set of tools built around Bazel and pip tools. Pip tools is an open source project that's used by pipenv. It does pipenv's heavy lifting. Uh, and Beav is what we use to manage our Python dependencies. Beav is composed of Starlark macros, rules, aspects, and some command line tools that we wrote. And its output is a lock file, one lock file for every application. When I say application, it's interchangeable with a pi binary, let's say, just in, term, in, Basel, in Basel terms, think about it that way. Um, so there's one lock file per application. A lock file is a set of third-party dependencies, each one pinned to a specific version. You can think of it as an application's requirements.txt but one that's auto-generated by Bazel as needed. So here we leveraged Bazel's ability to walk the dependency graph and collect all the third-party dependencies for every target in that graph. And we leveraged pip tools ability to take those dependencies, resolve them, and generate a lock file. So then we take each application's lock file and we use it to generate a virtual end, which is where we do our development and unit testing. And we take that same lock file and we generate a wheel which we use to deploy the application. So here's an example. This is a toy build file with some application. It's got three targets. And note that we've annotated each Python rule with a new attribute called requires, which takes a list of pip dependency specifications. So here a dependency specification is just a constraint on which versions of a package are allowed to be installed. Also note that we have a pyvn rule this rule tells Beav that we want to generate a lock file for the associated pi binary. When we Bazel run this, the pi vnv rule, the Starlar code behind that rule generates a requirements.in file, which, as you can see, is just the union of the requires attributes over the transitive closure of the pi vnv rule. <coughs> Beav then calls pip compile to take that requirements setting file and generate this lock file. The lock file contains pin versions of all the dependencies in the requirements setting file, as well as their transitive dependencies, and so on, which is just another way of saying that it's the complete set of Python packages that our pi binary needs in order to run. Nothing more, nothing less. It's the precise set of those packages. Note that generating this lock file is not hermetic, nor is it reproducible. That's because it depends on the current state of PyPI at the time you generate it. If you run pip compile in the same in file two times, you're not guaranteed to get the same lock file as output. But you are guaranteed that the resulting lock files will conform to all the specifications, all the constraints in the requirements that in file. And that's what we really care about. So how did it work for us? Well, one of the downsides is that developers must now be aware of Python environments where they didn't have to before. And they have to explicitly switch between them uh, to run Bazel tests, say. And that's error prone. We'd like to get rid of it or reduce it. We also inadvertently made Bazel's caching less effective. And changes to third-party dependencies aren't automatically propagated 
to the Pi libraries and Pi binaries that are downstream from them. Uh, right now, that's a manual step. We hope to improve that too. On the plus side, we did achieve our most important goal, which is to reliably know the precise set of third-party dependencies that every Python application has. That is the set that contains everything the application needs and nothing that it doesn't. Our solution is monorepo friendly, which should go without saying, because we're a monorepo. Uh, and it has the nice side benefit that we can now track dependency changes over time because our lock files are checked into Git and we have their histories. And last but not least, we can easily produce wheels for our Python applications, which has made deployments a real breeze. So I'm happy to talk more about Beaver for Python dependencies. Please feel free to email me with any questions or just find me at the conference. Thank you. Fight it out. Yes, exactly. Oh, I'm so, thank you. Uh, so the question was, is any, in our mono repo, is any Pi library uh, able to be depended upon by any, say, Pi binary or other Pi library in the repo? And the answer is yes. We don't impose constraints over that. That was one of the starting assumptions. Which means you can have one lock file for the entire repo, essentially, where you have, like, say, like, it, it'll boil down to one version of a request, or one version of NumPy, and one version of Airflow, if you did everything well, so one thing uh, I didn't mention explicitly, I had, to, I had to cut the talk significantly, but um, every time a dependency is specified, it can, be spe it can be specified at a particular version or a version constraint. And so if we tried to, we could try to build one requirements file um, for the whole repo, but what we would probably run into is version conflicts, where some library somewhere required, you know, some version less than X and some other one required greater than X. We would, in fact, because I've tried it. Thank you.